Hello students, this video is about solving double angle equations. Equations like this one, cosine of 2x plus 1 equals 1 half. This is a double angle equation because you have a number in front of x. So this, the directions here say solve the equation over the interval 0 to 2 pi. Write your, write your solution as a decimal radian to the nearest hundreds place. So if I get, begin, is of course you want to isolate the cosine of 2x by subtracting 1 from both sides. So now what you have is cosine of 2x equals a negative 1 half. And of course you should know at this point in order to solve that you do the cosine inverse of both sides. So 2x equals the cosine inverse of negative 1 half. And cosine inverse of negative 1 half, if you think about that on a unit circle, cosine is negative 1 half on, in two places. So remember all students take calculus. Cosine is positive here, and cosine is positive there. So cosine is negative in this direction, and cosine is negative in this quadrant. So or if it would be negative 1 half, this would be negative 1, that would be 2, of course that would be square root of 3. So angle 60 degrees, and so is this one. So if that's true, the angle to 60 degrees above 180 is 120 degrees. So we'll answer 120 degrees. Uh, the, angle of this, the angle that is 180, 120 degrees below 180 is 240 degrees. So another angle is 240 degrees. So ordinarily we just have two angles if we're solving trig equations. But in this case, our period has changed. Instead of our period being 2 pi, our period is smaller than that because we've got a number in front of x. We have a b value. So the way we find our period is the period for this problem should be 2 pi over b. So 2 pi over b, in this case b is 2, so it's 2 pi over 2 or pi. So my period for this problem is pi or 180 degrees, because pi means 180 degrees. So what I know is that this graph, instead of being a regular cosine curve, which looks something like this, Starts off at 1, bottoms out at negative 1, ends this period at 2 pi. This period is half as long. It goes to pi. So right here at pi, it would have finished its cycle. It would have done its whole cycle at pi and then repeat it again. So in this case, it would reach negative 1 half, which is right here. Instead of being two places, it will reach it here. It will reach it here, it will reach it here, and it will reach it here. So it actually crosses that line, this negative one half, four times. So I actually got four different answers to this problem instead of just those two. So the way we find out the answer is we take the answer that we know and we add our period to it. So since our period is 180, um, I'm, I'm going to add 180 to, um, to uh, 120. So 120 plus 180. Oh, you know what? Before we begin, Let's first divide everything by 2. Because we're not just finding the angle, we find an x. So divide everything by 2. And that will give me x equals to 60. And x equals to 120. So again, we're finding x, not just the entire angle. So if that's true, I'm going to take my 60 degrees and add 180 to it. And that's going to be at 240. So 240 should be a solution for it. I'm going to take uh, 120 and add 180 to it. That's 300. So 300 should also be a solution. So if I check that out, if I plug in 60 or 120 or 240 or 300 into that angle, I should get the output of 1 half or negative 0.5. And I just plug in my calculator just to make sure I was right before I did this video. And all these angle measurements do give me an output. I plug in x, so it would be cosine of 2 times 60 is going to be 0 0.5, but better at negative 0.5. So it does work. And if you check all the other ones, it should work too. But, you know, but just make sure, you should, you should pause the video yourself, just make sure those values work. Now, if you remember in the directions, it says write your answer on the interval 0 to 2 pi, not 0 to 360, and write your answer as decimal radians to the nearest hundredth place.
So we first need to change our answer back to radians. So um, basically, if you remember, to change the radians, you multiply by power over 180. So the exact value is 60 pi over 180, or 120 pi over 180, or 240 pi over 180, or 300 pi over 180. So those are exact, it wants decimal values though. So you actually got to plug each of those into your calculator to get the decimal values for it. I'm going to let you know what those are now. So I'm going to plug each of these in my calculators, get the decimal form. So the first one is 60 pi divided by 180. And that's um, 1.05. So x is about 1.05. X is about, I'm plugging 120 pi divided by 180, so 120 pi divided by 180, 2.09, and then 240 pi over 180, which is 4.19, and then the final answer is about 300 pi over 180, so So 5.24. All right. So I'm just make sure I didn't go too far here. So they want it on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. So it's decimals. 2 pi is 2 pi is a decimal. It's about 6.28. So since the highest value can be 6.28, that's definitely less than 6.28. And that's bigger than 0. So all of those should have worked. And just to make sure, I'm going to plug in each of those in my calculator in radians mode. So, so I'm going to calculate back to radians mode. Make sure you get one half. So if I plug in cosine of 2 times 1.05. It gives me basically negative 0.5. Mind you, I did estimate. I didn't plug in the exact values. Hence, my answer is estimation. And if I plug in... Cosine of 2 times 2.09. That's about the same thing, about negative 0.5. And then cosine of 2 times 4.19. Again, it's about negative 0.5. And cosine of 2 times 5.24. Still negative, about negative 0.5. So, we could have gotten more accurate if you used more decimal spaces. But our direction said go out to the hundreds place, so we did. I hope that helps. Um, and this is true as well if you had cosine of 3x, cosine of 4x, and so forth. Each one of those changes your period. So, you saw the equation with the initial two values that you know from the unit circle, as if it was going to 360. And then you take that period, and you add the period to each of those answers you found originally, until you max out the number of times that that graph would meet its meet the value of x. I'm um, sorry, the value is equal to in that in that range um, from zero to two pi. Hope that helps. Good luck.